So the war system is based upon three simple myths. The first myth is that humans are naturally violent. The second myth is that war is inevitable. And the third myth is that war makes us safe. And to create a world without war, we have to debunk all three of those myths. And we also have to offer a more effective security paradigm to replace the outdated war paradigm. Um, demilitarization and disarmament are essential to move into a world beyond war because both address the major elements of the social institution of war. Uh, demilitarization is about changing people's thinking and disarmament is about changing methods to deal with disputes. Nonviolent resistance is essential to moving to a world beyond war. It's the most creative and powerful uh, mechanism for social change that we've ever seen. Governments won't move unless people push. There's nothing more important than well-organized public opinion from global civil society. To get to a world beyond war, we need to recognize that we know that there are more and more effective alternatives to war and violence. And that includes achieving security without the use of force. Yes, women are victims, but they are not passive victims. They are taking action and using their agency to find peaceful solutions and offer them, present them to decision makers so we can realize a world beyond war. Study war no more is very important because history is full of war heroes, war glories, glorifying war but we have never glorified peace. Well, as we look at our society, uh, there's no way in the world that we can go to a world beyond war unless we stop our very offensive foreign policy and military operations and come to a policy of actually defending, uh, defending the United States, not pushing the United States and its policies out on other people. Uh, yes, I think that uh, giving people a vision of stable peace and showing them that such a vision is realistic is going to be very powerful in shunting us out of the war system. If we invest early on in diplomacy and foreign aid, we can head off conflicts before they get so bad and we can see an entire new world with more security in more places than we've ever seen by investing so heavily in the military. The world desperately needs a working system of governance. And the closest we have to that is international law. And it doesn't matter whether international law is based on morality or whether it's based just on a bunch of lawmakers saying we're making this law. A, a, mili a militarized response to violent conflict is inherently political, it's inherently resource-based, um, and it is the, the, the furthest away from actual concerns and care for safety and security for civilians. A civilian-led defense, a civilian-led protection force is about, is, it's a holistic approach to stabilization for including the most people possible in the safest possible environment. One of the stereotypes that people tend to hold on to is that religion is the cause of conflict, but it's also a powerful resource for building a world beyond war. Religion can be a resource in stopping conflict, in healing, and in creating a world of lived peace. War is inherently racist. If we don't deal with the connections between war and racism, then we won't ever get to a world beyond war. 
Peace education is essential to move beyond war because without understanding fully what war is, its institutional and, and systemic characteristics, knowing something of the possible alternatives, having the values that leads one to want to explore the alternatives and the skills to do that exploration and take action is essential to any change in the system. You know, it's interesting when I think about technology's use to moving to a world beyond war. You know, human beings are tool creators, and that's something that is, is hugely important to us. And so if the most important thing we can do is end war, then obviously, like, the tools that we create are going to be hugely instrumental into helping make that possible. First of all, I think ecological security in terms of indigenous rights are not really, it's not set aside necessarily under those terms, but war is still like a knee-jerk reaction um, to a breach in security, and ecological security for indigenous peoples has an enormous cultural component. We see in places like Standing Rock how peaceful protection is addressed with excessive brutality. And until indigenous sovereign rights, the nation's rights to ecological security are fully honored and the protective measures are implemented, this ongoing colonial legacy will continue.